All right, today uh, with us in the Franklin Community High School uh, Career Exploration Project, we have with us Joel Ott, and he is the Chief Operating Officer for Lilly's Biomedical um, Branch of their of their corporation. Is that accurate, or did I completely butcher that? No, I've not completely butchered it, but uh, I'm in Lilly Biomedicines. It's a business unit within Lilly. Uh, the company is divided up into different business units based on uh, the therapeutic areas uh, in which the drugs are used. So we have oncology, diabetes, and everything else is a catch-all for Lilly Biomedicines. Okay. And then, um, so just talk about a little bit about your role there and what helped you get there. I know, you know, you, you've talked about all your, your experiences, so just kind of how you got there. Sure. Um, so I, I lead uh, specifically within Lilly Biomedicines, uh, focus in pain and neuroscience. Uh, a chief operating officer is a fancy way of, of saying a, an operations lead. So I'm a team leader, uh, project manager for a cross-functional lead, uh, cross-functional team uh, in which I lead through the drug development process, uh, which involves a lot of planning uh, and execution of different strategies uh, set forth by the company. Um, I manage budgets, very fun stuff, uh, and, and different resources. Uh, resources can involve both people and, and actual money and dollars. And so uh, I'm a steward of the company's money, make sure we're spending it in the right way. Uh, we do spend a lot, but uh, that's the cost of, of the business. Um, also identify and manage any risks that might come up along the way. You can lay out the best uh, plan uh, out there, but uh, things change, especially when you deal with science and uh, clinical data. Uh, and also help keep all the stakeholders, all the big important people at, at the company informed on how each project is progressing. Um, leading up to this role, I've had multiple roles in, in project management, uh, nearly all of them in, in project management. However, I joined the company uh, as an organic chemist, so I do have a science background. And, um, you know, that, that career change, really, um, I was more of a people person. Uh, than, than your typical organic chemist and, and lab rat, so to speak. But uh, I realized that about four or five years into my career that, you know, I really enjoyed working with my hands uh, in the labs. But however, the, the people and the personality uh, element of, of my uh, interests really over, overtook that, uh, that interest in the labs and I switched over to more business uh, centric role. Yeah. All right. Um, that's just a, that's an interesting change from the from the chemist side to the to the business side um, kind of how did you get drawn into that into both the chemistry and the and then the business part of it and uh, what background like education wise do you have sure uh, I was I, in, out of high school I knew I liked science so I went into Hanover College thinking I was going to be pre-med and and uh, a few introductory uh, biology classes uh, convinced me otherwise, and uh, I realized I didn't, I wasn't pre-med, uh, but I really enjoyed chemistry. So I got a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Hanover. Um, at that point, I still didn't really understand what a, a chemist did or what did they really do, and nothing really interests me out of uh, out of you know the bachelor's or undergraduate. So I uh, went to uh, a graduate program at the University of Louisville in Kentucky uh, and got a master's degree in organic chemistry. There, my advisor uh, had some connections in the pharma, pharma industry uh, at Lilly at Pfizer, uh, GlaxoSmithKline. So I went and interviewed there and uh, got a job at Lilly. And again, I've spent about four years as an organic chemist. Uh, I mentioned it before, but uh, there I was number one, being very creative. I really like to work with my hands at the end of the day. I'm like, I can hold up a beaker or a flask of stuff and say, I'm, I made this today. And so it was yeah. very rewarding uh, working with my hands. Um, and then uh, once I got out of the labs, um, several years after I got out of the labs to help supplement my business um, knowledge, I got an MBA at Butler uh, roughly about four or five years ago. I uh, did that part time uh, again, just to help supplement my current role and, and future roles. Wow, that's that's amazing! The, just the education you have. Obviously, um, had you gone to a, a better 
uh, undergrad institution, maybe like Franklin College, um, then then you would have probably gotten a you know maybe gone into into medicine. But I guess Hanover is okay. Yeah, I'll plead um, the fifth on that one. <laughs> um, so as far as the job you have now, Andy, even the past jobs, what are some of the pros that you have? Some of the things you're just like, I love this. And and no matter how much we love our jobs, there are some things that we don't like. So what are some of those things for you? Yeah, uh, I think I mentioned a few in the labs. You know, if you're a if you're a lab rat, you're a lab rat. You don't interact with a lot of different people. Of course, you you know eat lunch and and talk to different people and whatnot. But usually, you have your head stuck in a hood uh, or fume hood uh, doing reactions, and so mm -hmm. there's not a lot of that people interaction there. Um, and I can say this because I'm a trained chemist, but not all the trained chemists have the the biggest personalities. A lot of them are introverts and it's okay to be introverted. But right. again, I turned out to be more extroverted uh, than, than most of my uh, chemist colleagues. So, um, so I'll talk about the, the, the pros of the, of the chemistry role though, was really, again, very satisfying. And, and at the end of the day, I can hold something up and like, I, I made this or I created this today. <clears throat> I don't get that in my current role. It's, it's very more dynamic and fluid. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the pros for my current job uh, it's it's really a, a challenge. Uh, there are a lot of things that have to come together to to work. Uh, the teams I work with uh, involve, uh, you know, clinical experts who who design and, and conduct clinical studies. Uh, they're medical experts. Uh, they have medical degrees. Um, you know, they're MDs. Uh, people who um, are strictly operational and further a lot further in the weeds than I am. In terms of actually running the clinical study, I work with uh, chemistry and manufacturing to make sure all the product gets to uh, the all the sites that uh, run the clinical studies. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's a mishmash of a lot of different people, a lot of different personalities. Yeah, we all have to come together, play together, play nice, um, stay within our sandbox, but understand what other sandbox are are doing. Right. And so uh, it's like a big puzzle to me. I love puzzles. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm no longer an organic chemist, but I'm, I'm still a nerd in that way. But um, but really for me, uh, I was about one class away from a psychology minor at Hanover. But like uh, people have always interested me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very curious about people. I could sit in an airport and watch people watch for hours and just make up stories of what they are and who they are and what, what they like and stuff. So um, the people part really interests me and, and uh, having an athletic uh, background, um, uh, I'm an innate coach, so coaching's within me. Uh, it literally, we really uh, stress on developing people and and you know developing leaders. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as I've been mentored and coached by others. Uh, it's my also my job to pass the baton on that and and coach and develop others to become better drug developers. And so that's what I really enjoy about the job. Uh, cons, um, you know, I, there's nothing wrong with my job. I'm just kidding. But it's all perfect, uh, right? Yeah, it's all great. My boss isn't listening, right? Um, <laughs> it, it's not an eight to five job. It's um, it's not a role where you go to work, you do your work, and you leave your work at at work, and you go home and you spend time at home, um, and just forget about it all. It leading a global effort by definition. It means that it requires different time zones. So uh, mm -hmm. I usually start at six in the morning. I, I'd like to sleep in a little bit, but I work with people in China, uh, Japan, India, um, and so I, I'm a, I am a morning person. So I, I, my pre preference is uh, working in the morning. They they usually like working in the evening, so it works out. But yeah. um, but again, it's a sometimes it's a struggle to maintain that work life balance mm -hmm. and, and turning your brain off. You got to turn your brain off and like again, there's always problems to fix. They'll be there tomorrow, and so. Um, but I'm a problem solver. And, and so I'll let something eat at me. You know, I'm sitting at the dinner table with my family and, and I'm just off in space trying to think about like what I need to do tomorrow and, and whatnot. And so a part of it is um, it's not an eight to five job, but a part of it is training your brain just to turn off and, and be able to relax a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that is definitely a key is just being able to kind of turn that off and, and relax a little bit. Um, so as far as, as being in your profession, what type of person do you think would, would excel or would be good at that? And what type of person may struggle in, in this, in this role or profession? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we have, you know, I mentioned introverts, extroverts, you know, team leaders, 
who have similar roles than I do. Uh, we have introverts and extroverts. Uh, there's not a, a, a an ideal um, background or, or pedigree, so to speak, from a schooling standpoint. Uh, we have lots of pharmacists. We have organic chemists. We have uh, clinical operations folks who are who are not MDs, who but who are who lead uh, or who have a lot of understanding of how clinical de- uh, studies are designed and and executed. Um, we have we have mathematicians. Um, so usually it's a science based background of some sort. And again, math and science. Um, there are some folks who, who are strictly business and who have MBAs and finance degrees who are, who are team leads. Um, and so there's not really a, a, a certain, like I said, pedigree to, to do this job, but you do need to be good with people. Uh, mm-hmm. Introverts can be good with people. They just got to find out the best way to do that. Uh, right. Extroverts can be bad with people, you know, too extroverted uh, or too overbearing or whatever. Um, and it kind of goes to, you know, emotional intelligence. I don't know how much that's been talked about at high school, but knowing yourself and knowing how to uh, maximize your relationship with people uh, to, to really maximize their efforts and outputs. Uh, so being, a, in short, a people person really helps. Um, great communication skills, both oral and written. Um, there's a lot of emails I write to senior management uh, to, again, provide updates to, to them and, and communicating where, where things stand. And so mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot on the line with uh, lots of different things that are going on. Um, for, for the flip side of that, of people who might struggle in a role like this is if you don't deal with ambiguity very well, this, this role uh, is, is probably not for you. Um, there's a lot of decision, big decisions that have to be made with, without all the data or all the information there to make the right one. Uh, I'd say that's probably true in business across the board, not just this role is, you know, uh, with all the pressures of delivering faster and faster and, and with less money, that means you're going to have to make decisions with, with less data or information. So mm-hmm. um, that might be a, a unfair blanket statement, but at least in my little world that I, f- I find that to be true. No, I, th- I think, <clears throat> I think that's definitely a, a case. A lot of times, I mean, you've got to make quick decisions too, and maybe not off with as much data as you, as you would like. So, um, how, how would you suggest someone prepare for, for this role? Um, or even in, even in the like chemist chemistry field or biomedical field, how would you recommend that any classes or anything like that? Yeah, obviously AP classes, uh, in high school, uh, if we're talking to people going into college, get into, uh, get all your prereqs done early. Uh, and again, it's, and if you're talking about traditional sciences, uh, you know, chemistry, math or chemistry, biology, physics, um, you know, get those out, out early. Uh, you're going to need math. So take math too, uh, at least for a chemistry major. I know there's physical chemistry, which is very math heavy. So you'll need calculus, but take all those classes you can in high school, um, learn as much as you can because typically your college uh, classes will go a lot faster than what your high school classes have been. Um, back in the day, and when I was in school, it was like one college semester basically equaled an entire uh, high school um, year. So mm-hmm. it's a lot faster and uh, faster pace. So if you can absorb as much as that in high school, uh, you'll be set up better in, in college. Great. Yeah. Uh, so last question. Think of yourself. Think of 16, 17-year-old Joel you're in high school, uh, you're ready to go to college. Give me some advice that you would like to give to him. Just some general high school advice. Yeah, I think, you know, some people have a very good idea uh, of what they want to be when they grow up. Uh, some people acknowledge, like, I don't have a clue. Um, there's there's not a right or wrong there. And so, uh, and honestly, most people who think they want to be whatever when they grow up, I'd like to see some statistics of whether that actually happens. There are some driven people who know exactly what they want to do. And, and I think that's great. Um, but just know that if you, if you don't know, um, things can still work out. I think it, it's worked out for me fairly well. I, I yeah. like my job. Um, but I was a naive country boy from Southern Indiana. Um, my parents didn't go to college. I, again, I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry and I didn't even know what a chemist did. And so, um, I think if you really like the sciences, though, um, I would I would maybe 
think about going to a more of a state school than a liberal arts school, Franklin or Hanover, uh, because really those those smaller schools don't have graduate programs in, right. in those sciences. And so uh, you're not going to get like hands on techniques uh, for for chemistry, so to speak, or a lot. You're not going to be able to do a lot of you know research, whereas as, as a state school, uh, you're going to have professors whose main job is is research and not teaching. And so, again, in my experience, um, a lot of those smaller liberal arts schools, those those professors are there to, to teach and not do research. And so uh, they actually get paid to do research at, at a larger university. So um, I would I would consider that. But but again, I think, you know, it's still doable. But just know that um, if you're going to be in a lab, uh, you'd probably want an advanced degree anyway. So, so a liberal arts school isn't, isn't all that bad. So, yeah. Yeah. But again, my advice is number one, it's okay to not know. Uh, but also if you don't know, leverage things like this, leverage your account guidance counselor, leverage any other um, opportunities or, or resources that you have at your disposal to talk through, um, you know, different scenarios and what, what might that look like? You know, uh, yeah, I want to sign up for a four year undergrad degree, but you might be signing up also for a PhD in something that I never heard of until I got to graduate school as a postdoc. And so that's even more research on top of a PhD. So, um, you know, you're looking at four years as an undergrad, you're looking at four years in graduate school to get a PhD and then you're looking at another two years for a postdoctoral. Right. If you want to go teach, chemistry or teach biology at a, at a major college. So that's a lot of, a lot. A lot of uh, years to sign up for. So, <laughs> Hey, uh, Joel, thank you once again for joining us. We seriously appreciate the time. Um, and uh, we just, we, we are so glad for you to, we thank you for, for sharing your experiences with us. Sure. Anytime. Thanks a lot for the opportunity.